So uh, today I'm going to present you uh, some, some experiments I did with huge pages and MySQL and Postgres, uh, mostly. And uh, the presentation is going to be uh, starting with why it took me to, to test this and try this. Uh, I'm going to just do a brief review of how memory works, a very simplified one, just for the context. Uh, then how you would have an application work with huge pages, uh, how we set up large pages in practice, and all of these in the context of Linux, okay, and x86 mostly. I haven't really looked into anything else but that. And then I did some testing. I'm going to discuss the results uh, I got with you. So, really, my main motivation was seeing, uh, uh, well, seeing, uh, Working with TalkUDB and MongoDB and having the transparent huge pages always on the way. H has anyone worked with TalkUDB before? No. Yeah. Well, okay, nice. So you might remember that if we start TalkUDB, if you try to start MySQL with the TalkUDB storage engine and you have transparent huge tables enabled in the server, it won't start. It refuses to start, right? And it tells you to, to, to disable that. And uh, then I started working a little bit with MongoDB, and uh, the manual uh, says, this, well, you can actually start MongoDB with transparent huge pages, but the manual uh, tells you not to. And it says that uh, database workloads often perform poorly with transparent huge pages, right? And they say that because they tend to have sparse rather than contiguous memory access patterns. But so. Let's think about those two databases mostly which I'm going to cover today, MySQL and Postgres. The main thing on a database, it, it would be the database cache, right? We, we aim to have all the data in index, or at least most of that in memory, so we have a, a, a faster access. And uh, uh, with MySQL covering the, the main storage engine, which is the InnoDB, we have uh, the manual kind of suggesting us to use as much as 80% consecrated to this uh, database cache, to the InnoDB uh, uh, buffer pool, right? So we would have something like this. This is a roll of thumb, of course, but what we want to say is as much as, as the memory in the server we con can consecrate to uh, the database cache, the better it's going to be because it will going to need to access less the disk in search of pages, right? And if you happen to fit all your, your database uh, in as much as uh, in the buffer pool size, then you will be in practice working with an in-memory uh, database. 80%, but it really depends on, 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 on how, mu how much memory you have in the server, right? If you have a lot of memory, you might be using more than that. With Postgres, uh, it works a little bit different. Uh, the, 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 what we can call the, the database cache is uh, the, the shared buffers. And what they say is that we shouldn't uh, use most of the memory for the shared buffers. And that's because uh, Postgres is a little bit different. Every time you look for something in the database that is not in its cache, that is not in the, in the buffer pool, uh, in the shared buffers, it is going to look for that on disk, of course. But then it needs to load to the OS cache first and then uh, get that to the uh, shared buffer. So there is, at least for a while, a double caching uh, taking place. For the same page, you are going to find it in the OS cache. You're also going to find it in the shared buffers. It's not better or worse than what MySQL does. It's just different, right? And for this reason, uh, it says, well, you, you won't be really wanting to consecrate uh, as much memory just to the shared buffers and just forget uh, the OS cache. So they say the opposite. So you just dedicate uh, a little bit of the memory, 20%, 30%, 40% to the shared buffers. In practice, uh, it really depends in Postgres as well if you can fit your whole database in, in memory because if you do, then making this wouldn't make sense, in fact, you would do the opposite. You would do like you do with MySQL. Because if you can fit your whole database in memory, then you won't need to, to look for the data on disk, right? And uh, traverse the OS cache to get into the shared buffers. Of course, it could be the opposite as well. If you, if you and find a balance between the shared buffers and the OS cache for Postgres. 
Just wanted to cover this for the database cache because it's part of, of what we are going to discuss. So how memory works. But having in mind this is a very simplified uh, version of the, of, of the process, right? So all the applications, they work with virtual memory. Nowadays it's always like that, right? So the process that asks for memory, it has the impression it is working with a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of contiguous memory. Even if uh, uh, re really we might have uh, blocks of memory from different parts of the physical memory uh, that are uh, allocated to, to, this, to this application, right? So there must be some kind of mapping between the virtual memory the application has access to and the physical memory in the server. And uh, this mapping requires some kind of, uh, of translation, right? Uh, when you are looking for uh, this block of memory here that my application got, so I need to find out where it is in the physical uh, uh, storage, in the physical in memory. So there is a data structure that is called the page table that is used uh, for this mapping, this mapping mechanism. And uh, this is per application, and uh, this is stored in memory as well. So uh, every time I'm looking for my page uh, in the application, it translates to, to a page in the physical system. And this is done at the, the processor, at the, the memory management unit level, right? And, uh, oops, well, since this is kind of expensive, right? In, in, take in mind the context of expensive here. Every memory access needs to, to find out where is the virtual, where is, where is the physical memory, right? So the, it is expensive, so there is a, a way to optimize this, this process, which is by employing a cache at, the, at, the, at the, the, the core level of the CPU, right? So again, a simplified version. There is several levels of cache in the CPU. We're just thinking globally here. So this, this cache, it is known as the, the translation look aside buffer, the TLB, right? So what happens is every time there is a, a, a memory access request, that cache is looked at first. If the entry we, we are looking for, the mapping of the page we're looking for, it's there, then it just returns uh, the, the, the result, and we call it a TLB hit. If it is not, then it needs to traverse the whole page table for that application to find the mapping it is looking for, and we call it a TLB miss, right? The real difference between them both is that when we find the entry we are looking for in the cache, it is one memory access to do that. When it is not, we have a two memory access. So, the TLB is quite small. We can't have all the entries cached in there, like all, most caches, right? So how can we improve the efficiency of, of, of this process? How can we decrease the number of misses we, we, we get? Just increasing the TLB size at the hardware level is quite expensive and limited, right? You can just do it for all the memory we are working now nowadays. And the alternative for that is just to increase the, the, the page size. Now, think about this. Page size, a regular page size in Linux is four kilobytes, right? But most of modern processors, they work with uh, alternative sizes, which are called the, the, the large pages. Uh, we have mostly, in Linux, we will find two megabytes, sometimes four megabytes, and one gigabyte, one gigabyte of, of page. And uh, we can even find uh, at some, some more modern ones, a uh, half a terabyte page in, in some cases. If you consider then a test server of 256 gigabytes of RAM, which is the one I have used for, for my tests, with four kilobyte pages, we have seven, 67 million pages to account for. So we will need to map 67 million pages between virtual uh, memory and physical address. With two megabytes, we get a little better uh, uh, stance, right? There are only three, th th well, 131,000 pages. And one, with one gigabyte pages, you only have 256. Of course, it's not like, uh, uh, well, I just have 256 uh, uh, entries for one gigabyte pages, then I can fit them all in the TLB cache. 
this is really kind of dependent of the uh, architecture and the processor, and even the version of the processor. It has uh, a capacity for different uh, 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 amounts of uh, uh, pages in the TLB, depending on the size. But those two are, are what we could call uh, the large page, huge pages. It's, the name is it's used uh, in both ways, large page, huge page. It started with some people call a large page for a, a certain amount of memory, then, then uh, other people call huge pages. In MySQL, you call it large pages. In Postgres, you call it huge pages. Now, working with larger pages uh, with uh, MySQL and Postgres. Again, why we would do that? The thing is, if we have larger pages, we will, of course, of course, improve performance because the number of TLB misses we will have will be small, right? There are less pages. Uh, uh, we can fit more of those pages in cache, in the TLB cache. That is the one premise of using huge pages, with my sequence Postgres, but in general as well. How we do that? There are two ways. The application needs to have uh, a native support for working with static huge pages. So MySQL uh, that has, Postgres has, the, the Java Virtual Machine has as well. With MySQL, this is mostly limited to the buffer pool. And uh, remember, MySQL we use memory as well for temporary tables, for handling connections. Uh, uh, and other things, but it's really the buffer pool that takes the most of the memory. So it has support for, for huge tables at the buffer pool level. Now, uh, you need to have MySQL compiled with uh, huge pages uh, support, which most of the Linux distributions nowadays, they, they have. And uh, what happens is, if it, if it sees there is support for that, and you have uh, enabled that support in your configuration of MySQL, like we'll be looking uh, uh, later, then uh, the MySQL tries to allocate as much memory as we, we have asked during the initialization, during the, the, uh, the buffer pool initialization. With Postgres, uh, the, the use of uh, uh, huge pages is kind of done in the same way, except that well, the main, the main beneficiary for that is also the shared buffers, the, the Postgres cache mechanism. But you could also use that for, for other things. Uh, but let's keep with shared buffers in mind. I, I will explain you why in, in, in a few moments. The alternative way to, to use huge pages with Linux is what I'm uh, kindly uh, asking, uh, calling it here blindly, right? So the application has no knowledge of what a huge page is, but the operating system, it does, right? So it will transparently allocate huge pages for applications when it sees its fit, right? And that's what we call the transparent huge pages. Now, there is a process that works in the background, a kernel process, that will try to find uh, uh, enough memory to create a, a huge page. And uh, remember, it needs to be contiguous blocks of physical memory uh, for, for a huge page to be used. Then it will try to convert this block of, 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 of physical memory into a huge page. And then, if it sees fit, it will allocate a, 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 this one huge page a, 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 to, to an application that is asking for money, uh, for, for money, for <laughs> For memory, almost the same thing. Uh, of course, uh, there, there must be some, some, some algorithm behind that because you, you not want to allocate a two megabyte large page to an application that is requesting just a few kilobytes because you are going to be wasting the rest of, of the memory. Now, I just try to, to, to create a schema here to, to see if it helps understand the process. So all those, those red blocks are the regular 4K pages. And these, these green ones are uh, what we call large pages. That doesn't matter if it's two megabytes, one huge page uh, of one gigabyte. It's really not on scale. It's just for the context. So you see, here we don't have any contiguous blocks of, of, of free memory that we could use to create an, another huge page. So what the kernel does in the background is it will just try to see if it can move blocks around. Right? And this. 
moving of blocks around, it looks for uh, 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 slots where it could just uh, move them, <coughs> and it will do that to free space for a new huge page uh, when, when it sees fit. Well, there's an algorithm behind that, right? So it created a, a new huge uh, uh, page there. Problem with that is that this process is a little bit expensive when it comes to creating the huge page from a block of used uh, uh, regular pages, right? Because it is going to need to, to block the access to those, to those uh, 4K pages during the process. So we would see in, in, in production systems some stalls and sometimes, not always, but sometimes, they could be related to this background process uh, in, in the kernel that is just uh, uh, moving pages around. And that is one of the, the, the biggest motivation for people to say, well, just disable it with MySQL uh, uh, and MongoDB, right? Uh, okay so far? Yeah, good. So how do huge pages work in practice? Of course, the, the, the processor, the, the architecture needs to support it. And uh, looking at uh, uh, an Axion, for example, uh, this one that, uh, that I have worked with, it is only uh, compatible with uh, uh, two megabytes large pages and one gigabyte large page. And the way to know that is through the, uh, the flags uh, implemented by the, by, the, by the architecture. So the PSC is denoted for two megabytes, and P the PDP, a one GB, is for one gigabyte page. So this is how you know if your processor uh, it, it has support for huge pages. Right. Uh, one very interesting thing, and uh, uh, it took some time for me to realize, is that you cannot have those two uh, enabled at the same time. So you either have one or you have the other. Uh, one way to find out is looking at uh, the procman info. Right. It will tell you. Here, it shows that the current huge page size used by the server is two megabytes. This direct map here reference, it's, it's a little bit confusing for me at least. I couldn't really figure out exactly where this metric comes, comes from. It is related to the TLB use, right? But it is not like uh, uh, stating that I have direct, uh, I, I could fit all this memory here into the TLB cache. So this is something for, for later. Now. How do I change the huge page size? If, if my computer, if my server, it says it is working with two megabyte uh, uh, large pages, how do I switch to one gigabyte if the server has support for that? You can only do that during boot time. So there is uh, uh, an option here to state the size of, of the huge page, and you need to, to pass that to the, to the Linux uh, boot system uh, and tell it to, to uh, start with a, a different huge page uh, size, right? So you, you really need to restart the server. Now, that is only to have to switch between two megabytes and one gigabyte in this example here. Now that the server has support for, for huge pages and I have my huge page size, my default one set uh, correctly, the next step is to set up a pool of huge pages because that needs to be done beforehand. So there is a syscontrol command that you can use to do that, and you denote here the number of uh, huge pages you want to allocate for the huge pages pool, right? And when you do it, it uh, pre-allocates, it allocates that memory on the spot. So here you can see I have allocated like 10 pages of one gigabyte size. Uh, where is my default? Uh, it should be here, it's not. Well, it's one gigabyte. Uh, size, oh, oh, huge page size here. And uh, on the spot, it took my 10 gigabytes and considered that memory use it and unavailable for anything else, right? This is uh, the static huge page. You could also do, if you have a NUMA system, you could also just create this pool of huge pages in one of the nodes. So, the, the, because if you just do the, like in, in this example here, it will just uh, balance the amount of huge pages you have in all the NUMA nodes the system uh, has, right? Like it did uh, right here. So the way to do that uh, and just say, hey, 
I want my pool of huge pages allocated to node one or node zero, it would be uh, a little bit different. But uh, the, same, the same mechanism is done, right? You just tell, look, I'm assigning to node zero for the one gigabyte page size this amount of pages here, right? And then it will do just that in the zero, node zero here. Now, this online huge page allocation, the way we are doing here, it works, but it might not. And it won't tell you. You will need to check that out. So, like, for instance, here I have just tried to allocate 256 pages. This is, again, one gigabyte page size. And it just returned to me this command here. But in practice, it, in fact, created a pool of only 246 pages because it couldn't just find out the, the rest of the blocks aligned contiguous blocks to create the remaining pages. They were already being used, and it couldn't, it won't just move them out. All right? So what is a safest, safest method to do that, particularly with one gigabyte huge pages, which it's more difficult to, 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 to create the, to find the contiguous blocks, is at the boot time again. So you could just specify at the boot time, hey, I'm, I'm working with one gigabyte uh, uh, large pages, and I want you to create a huge page pool of 100 gigabytes during boot time. Right? Uh, now, disabling the, the transparent huge pages, you have seen in the, in the, in the previous uh, screenshot that there was like two megabytes being uh, uh, referenced by unknown huge pages. And this unknown huge pages here is reference for THP. So we know that THP is, is, is working on this server. And you could also look and you will find the, the, the kernel process that is working in the background. Now, to disable it, you could do it at runtime, right? Like uh, the, the TalkWDB uh, warning in the error log just show it how. You can just set the, the, the transparent huge page to never, and it is going to disable that. Uh, but you could also do that during boot time. So you just add another option. You will say transparent huge page never, and it won't boot with uh, transparent huge pages. The difference between both the, the two is that once it boots with, with transparent huge pages enabled, uh, it will take these two megabytes, and it just won't free uh, it for you. At least I, I, I wasn't able to. So if you are uh, certain you don't want to work with transparent huge pages, you could just uh, uh, have that in, in the in Grub. Okay. Now, configuring the database. The huge pages, uh, uh, well, both MySQL and Postgres are, are mostly run by uh, a regular uh, user uh, in Linux, right? And uh, the access to the huge pages, it is kind of uh, reserved to... Uh, users that are part of this group here, huge TLB SHM group. So the practical way to do that is just to have the MySQL user or the Postgres user uh, as a member of a given group and just set this group uh, uh, here, right? Uh, complementary, that user needs to have access to, to lock uh, that amount of memory we are trying to, 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 to create and to, to give to our buffer pool, to our shared buffers. So one way of, of doing that is by stating a, during the, 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 the initialization of the service that the, the, that user it has uh, unlimited uh, access to, 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 to locking memory. In fact, I, I, with MySQL, at least if you do that, you don't actually need to add the MySQL to that user group, but that is how it is supposed to be done. And then you just reload this, uh, the, 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 the service uh, uh, files. To actually enable that in MySQL and Postgres, you need to use the, the option large pages on in MySQL and uh, huge pages on in Postgres. If you don't do that, it won't just go and look for, for memory in the huge pages pool to allocate to the buffer pool or to the shared buffers. This is the sign that it should uh, start uh, using uh, memory for, from the huge pages uh, pool. Oops, okay. So I'm going to get back to that during my testing process. Uh, and this testing, I, I want you to, to remind you, 
what I really had in mind uh, when I set up in this, in this quest was just to see how having huge pages enabled would affect the performance of my SQL and Postgres. And the way I was planning to do that was to just run a few benchmarks and see if I, I would realize any difference in performance, right? I wasn't really into uh, looking at the TLB improvements per se. Not at first, at least. So my plan was I'm going to run my SQL and Postgres with some big benchmarks, mostly SysBench TPCC which, uh, and SysBench OLTP. SysBench TPCC, all of them are uh, artificial workloads, right? Uh, we are not looking to something that really goes into production. It's just a way of, 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 of testing things. And the TPCC, which is not an official a TPCC benchmark, it is a mix of uh, selects, inserts, updates in, in the same transactions. And uh, you will have a bunch of transactions like that. So it's really a read-write. Then uh, I, I have tried with SysBench LTP, but just the, the, the read-only version. And I ended up testing PGBench with Postgres as well, read-only uh, uh, mode. And I was considering two situations. The first situation was when I could fit my entire data set into the, 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 the caching of the database. Right? And the second situation was when I couldn't fit my whole data set into the, the, into the, into the cache. So what would happen in, in this mode here is that there would be a disk access to, to, to find out pages eventually. I would run each test three times uh, with each page size. And uh, I would also run the, each test uh, with different number of concurrent clients. Now, uh, each test with a duration of one hour. So why this number of, of, of concurrent clients here? because they are a multiple of the available threads on, on my testing server, right? which was like an Xeon with two sockets, each socket with 14 cores, and each core uh, 26 threads. So in total, I would have 56 threads available uh, in, in the server. Now it, again, 256 gigabytes of RAM, SSD disk uh, I tested with Ubuntu. For MySQL, I have used Percona server, which is a drop-in replacement for MySQL, and Postgres, uh, Postgres 10.6. Uh, I compiled the latest SysBench, and I have used uh, the PGBench that comes with uh, Postgres 10.6. The database configuration now. What I have done here was try to optimize that database in both, both cases for the SysBench TPCC benchmark. Right? Remember, it was a, a read-write benchmark. I haven't really tuned that for the read-only benchmarks I, I run afterwards. And what I would vary in each test would be those two things here. The size of the cache and whether I was using large pages or not in each test. Right. So, with Postgres, you set huge pages to own, but you could also set it to try, right? If you set it to try, in fact, if you set it to own and it just doesn't have access to all that memory you, you have configured shared buffers for, it just can't allocate as much memory, it will fail to restart and you would say, look, I wasn't able to allocate that much memory. What, what, what I was actually looking for was that much and I just couldn't. So it just stops there, right? It, it could also use huge pages try, which would say, well, I have tried to allocate, I couldn't, so I resorted to the conventional memory pool of 4K pages, right? Which you either want to use huge pages or you don't. You don't want to, in most cases, uh, just try, right? You could, if, if, you, if you use try, then you make sure you, you are looking uh, at the Postgres log afterwards to see if you are effectively using or not. With MySQL, it's a similar, except there is, there is no try. However, it won't fail to start if you have set it to start with large pages and it couldn't uh, reach out that much memory. It will just continue with the conventional memory pool, which I don't think it's better, but you, 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 you can't have it fail the, the starting if it can't have access to as much huge pages, right? So. 
There comes a, a, big, a big barrier I crossed during my tests with MySQL, which was using a one gigabyte huge page, right? What happened was that, look at that. I had a pool of 100 one gigabyte huge pages. So I had 100 gigabyte of memory allocated to the huge pages pool. Yet, I was only able to start, the biggest buffer pool I was able to start with this setup was 12 gigabyte buffer pool. And it eat all my memory here, right? So it took 97 pages, so 97 gigabytes, used to initialize a 12 gigabyte buffer pool. So this is my, 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 my initialization, uh, some of the variables, right? So 12 gigabyte buffer pool, Eight buffer pool instances. You can you can kind of uh, segment the buffer pool in, in, in many instances, and the default chunk size of the buffer pool is 128 megabyte. So it took me some time, but but I, I figured out that you are actually dividing the amount of 12 gigabytes, the buffer pool size, by the chunk size, and then you get the 96 pages. So in fact. MySQL won't allocate more than a chunk of the buffer pool per page. So in practice, it was just wasting the rest of the memory here, right? That's why it was allocating 96 uh, plus one. There is always an extra page being allocated uh, with that, right? Well, okay, I thought, let me just test it then, I would just increase the chunk size from 128 megabytes to one gigabyte, which makes sense, right? You are working with a larger page. Before, with four uh, kilobytes and two megabytes, you could fit many of these into a chunk uh, size of 128 megabytes. So let me at least try with one gigabyte size with that same logic. And uh, well, I just set chunk size to one gigabyte and started, so I should use like 96 uh, uh, um, gigabytes now, it's starting a, a buffer pool of 96 uh, uh, gigabytes of size. Yet it, it didn't start. I was able to start the this, this same setup here, but with uh, double the size of memory in the, the huge page pool. So, okay, I want to start my buffer pool with 96 gigabytes. I need to have a buffer pool that is allocated with twice the size but plus one page. And then it will just reserve the second half of, of, the, of the huge pages pool, right? Well, that won't do, right? That, that just won't do. I tried with a, yet a larger chunk size and uh, this time it worked, so. And look, I was only using 25 uh, gigabytes of pages for a 96 gigabyte buffer pool. And I started to making more math and thought, well, if I, I, I divide 96 by 24, I have the four gigabyte chunk size here. But then anything else didn't make any sense. So it's not clear to me what is the way that the buffer pool allocates memory when it comes to one gigabyte uh, huge pages, right? So I just got in touch with, with a friend at Oracle and try to, 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 to sort that out afterwards. But that is something to have in mind if you ever try now to work with MySQL and one gigabyte a huge page. Now back to the, to the benchmarks. Starting with that uh, sysbench, uh, which is a mix of read and write, I have uh, prepared the database with those two options here which will give me a, a data set of 92 gigabytes, nine, more or less, right? And uh, I would run it with uh, those conditions that I have explained uh, before, and with only uh, varying the number of threads each time for each page size, each buffer pool size. And uh, the resulting, after running this, this test, I would get a 99 gigabyte data set. So it would grow from 91.5 to 99.5. That would be the biggest data set I had. So I have tested Sysbench uh, TPCC with two uh, buffer pool sizes. One was 96 gigabytes, and one, the other one was uh, 24 gigabytes here. And look, I'm testing four kilobyte pages with each size of the buffer pool. And I'm getting these results here. 
So basically, we have two groups of lines here. One group which is for the 96 gigabyte, and one group of lines that is for the 24 gigabytes of buffer pool. So since I couldn't fit my buffer pool, my, my, all, all my data set into the buffer pool in the second option here, the, 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 the results would be uh, not as good because it would need to load the data from this uh, a lot of the time, right? But what, what really, well, okay. And uh, just to make it clear, after each iteration, I did recycle the data G, which means I just copied back that initial uh, preparation I had made at, at first, and I dropped the OS cache every, every single time. For MySQL, that didn't make any much difference, but for Postgres, it does. And looking at the same graph in, in a different way, we see only two lines, because all the 96 uh, uh, gigabytes buffer pool lines are stacked uh, here and the 24 gigabytes here. So in practice, I saw no, no benefit, no gain from using, uh, well, no performance gains from using huge pages with MySQL for this workload, TPCC, read write. Okay? Now, Postgres, same thing. Just presenting the second graph here. There is one set of lines for the, the bigger uh, shared buffers and another set of lines for the 24 uh, shared buffers. They actually converge at some point. And that is, uh, again, not trying to compare MySQL with Postgres here, right? There is a lot of things to consider. But we do know that Postgres, for this workload here, which is a bunch of small transactions that will create a connection each time. So it will create a connection, run a transaction, close the connection, open another, uh, another connection, another transaction. So Postgres handles this opening and closing of connections uh, in a different way because it is process-based, right? So it will going to actually fork the OS uh, process each time a new connection is made. Whereas MySQL it threads ba based, so it won't fork the whole process. It will just create another thread. Again, not trying to compare it. This is just kind of different ways of, of doing things. So with Postgres in this situation here, we would, what we would actually use in practice is a connection pool. Right? When, when it starts to, to, to have more than a, a certain number of connections, depending on the workload and depending how, how fast you open and close connections, a, a, a connection pool is kind of a must for, for Postgres. So now, starting with Postgres, with the OLTP uh, point select uh, workload from SysBench, which is another read-only, right? Just a read-only uh, benchmark. Same thing. I have prepared the data set. I, I, I have vacuumed the data set so it, it gets the, the, the tables clean. And uh, that resulted in, in, a bigger, uh, uh, in a bigger data set. So that, that was on purpose. The, the, table uh, uh, size here was on purpose to use as much memory as I could use uh, uh, in that server. Not as much as I could use, but way more than I had used it before. So uh, running again each, each, each test for one hour. The results were with this data set, I wouldn't really see any difference even when working with a smaller uh, uh, shared buffer compared to a bigger shared buffer. Okay, again, this varies a lot depending on the workload we have, right? For this workload, these were the results. And again, no difference whatsoever in page size, which was what I was looking for when, when I was doing all these tests, right? I was looking for some performance difference I could actually see, and, and, and I didn't. MySQL, same thing, uh, except that I couldn't run the test for 168 buffer pool because I just didn't have like 360 something uh, memory on that server, right? Then, well, I said, well, let me just try a different, a completely different benchmark, which I hadn't before, which is PG Bench. So I just took the exact same uh, system, the same server with the same setup, same configuration, and run a PG bench, uh, with, which is a Postgres benchmark, so it won't work on MySQL. I have prepared it with uh, these settings, resulting in, in a 187 gigabyte data set. Uh, and I just uh, run it uh, uh, with no vacuum because it is a read-only uh, uh, workload. And this time, I did get some differences. So 
first thing that is interesting here is that Postgres does scale well for this workload. So we, we increase the number of concurrent clients here. And for all cases but one, it does scale as well. And now that case of one, it's for four kilobyte page. So aha, OK. So first time, I use huge pages, and they make a very big difference when compared to huge pages. So with huge pages and the bigger uh, shared buffers, so the shared buffers that use almost the same uh, uh, size of the data set, I, 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 I kind of get a completely different performance when compared to regular 4K pages when it goes above 112 uh, concurrent clients. I, I, I did double check those numbers, right? But I decided, hey, let me just give it another try with transparent huge pages enabled this time, just to see if it makes any difference. And I just tested with 188 gigabyte pages. And it didn't make any difference. I again saw the 4K uh, uh, pages uh, uh, performing like that. So at that point, I kind of started looking well. I didn't want to look at TLB, but maybe I should. So I started looking at other people's research, right? And then I stumbled into Mark Allaghan's, uh, which is a reference. And he was just pointing out what I was doing and how, what, how wrong it could be, right? I was just focusing on, on the throughput itself. I wasn't looking at efficiency at all. What if, in fact, I am getting the same throughput so the same amount of uh, transactions per second, but I'm using my processors way less than before. Then maybe I could scale with a workload that would be more processor demanding than, than the, the ones I, I was using, right? So I started looking at measuring uh, the, the efficiency of the TLB buffer uh, with larger pages. Again, trying to see it at the CPU level, right? So if I use TL, uh, huge pages, and indeed that means I am exercising the TLB uh, in, in a better way, I should have my CPU perform uh, uh, more optimized, right? And here again, I look at another, another researcher, which is Alexander Nitkin, and uh, I inspired most of this part of the project on, 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 on his blog post. And I look at, at the actual counters that you can get with perf looking at the, at, at the processor level. And mostly what I'm looking here, uh, looking for here, is all those counters that are related to miss causes a walk, which actually means if the entry I'm trying to find out, it's not on my uh, TLB cache, then I need to traverse, I need to walk across my page table, and that will me mean a, a miss of the TLB, right? Another thing he, he looked at, uh, for was the actual number of CPU cycles spent in this process of missing a page in the cache and walking through the, through the page table. And so there are another, another, uh, another uh, counters that, that will count that. Some of them have aliases, like the, the first ones and this one. Some don't, so you actually need to use the, the code uh, to get that. And finally, the number of main memory reads because that would be affected by, by more TLB misses, right? Other counters. So how I did that? I run my tests, uh, a few of the tests again, uh, using perf. And I have binded perf to the actual uh, uh, database pro uh, process in the operating system. So I'm not looking at sysbench here. I'm just looking on how my SQL behaves uh, uh, for the workload that is presented to him. And uh, for this point here, which was uh, the, the Sysbench LTP uh, read only, the point selects, for uh, one gigabyte, uh, uh, 48 gigabyte uh, buffer pool, compared to the 4K uh, uh, point, in fact, I would have quite similar uh, uh, statistics from that, right? Which, well, OK. Let me try something else. So I'm looking at the, the PG Bench 1, where we actually see the discrepancy when it comes to these points here, which is uh, 224 uh, concurrent clients. And comparing the 4K 
with the one, K, one gigabyte page. And so we do, we do see more of a difference, but still it's not that much, right? So I think, well, I must be looking at something, that, that is something missing here. And then I realize we, we are comparing statistics, but for different uh, uh, throughputs, right? While here I'm having a much higher throughput than here. So if we, we, if we look at that, the number of transactions that are being carried by each, each test, and if we normalize the results to the 4K ones, we will see that uh, both the one gigabyte pages and the two megabyte pages, they perform better in terms of TLB uh, utilization than the 4K pages does. Right, how much time I have? Um, oops. So, going back to that, looking at the 4K pages only. This time I run, so what happened here was I got a, I got a message from, from Vadim, which is the CTO of Percona. I, I, I had borrowed one of his test servers, right? And he said, look, are you playing any tests right now? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm running some, some, some final uh, PG Bench stuff that I hadn't planned for before. And then he said, well, have you realized that the, the server is swapping? And I said, what? It's swapping. So, okay, it was just a little bit at first, but that makes a hell of a difference, right? What happened here was, my mistake, I have just take the same settings I have used for the Sysbench TPCC, which is a mixed workload of reads and writes, and use that with PGBench. And the difference between those two is that, well, TPCC, it doesn't produce any temporary tables, and PGBench produces a large amount of, of, of temporary tables. So looking at the second line here, the swap is even more evident, right? So. Whenever you have a swap in a benchmark like that, the results are, are gone. And this is what actually happened for my test. So when I look at with uh, uh, four kilobyte pages, I would get as much as 23 gigabytes of swapping across the test. That's why we were seeing uh, uh, the results so different. And uh, if we look at, at the, the, the page table, the amount of memory being, being dedicated to the page table with four kilobyte pages, we can actually see it, it requires much more memory just to maintain the page table during the tests when compared to using larger pages, right? And uh, uh, adds to the pressure, right? So, bottom line. Benchmark worked great with, uh, with huge pages and bad with 4K pages. We saw the memory pressure, but there was also some memory pressure we saw for, for the others as well. Why is this so much different? Any shots? Okay, that, that, that is a possibility. Okay. okay. Well, mostly it means, uh, depends on where the page you are looking for is actually located. But in fact, I was discussing these results with a friend which used it to work with Oracle, the Oracle database. And uh, what he told me was, you know, Fernando, we never really saw performance gains with using huge tables. And at the time, they were using two megabyte huge tables. But we did use that for some uh, setups. And you know why? I said, no. And he said, well, well, static huge pages, they cannot be swapped to disk, right? If you have your entire shared buffer into huge pages, there is no way the server is going to swap that on disk when there is memory pressure. It's going to swap anything else but that. That, that could be good, but could be bad as well. But there is the, the takeaway from, from this lesson here. So there was a lot of memory pressure here because of the, the page table size, but also because uh, the huge pages didn't pass it to that. 
It would affect maybe some, uh, some isolated uh, connections, but not the shared buffers. So yeah, if you look at Oracle uh, recommendation from, from various experts, you will see they actually, they actually uh, uh, use huge pages just for, uh, for, for, for avoiding swapping. So sorry, I just passed my time. What I really wanted to, to say, I mean, uh, was that the, I, was, I wasn't actually prepared for, for that adventure. I was looking at something different, right? And I had this notion that the databases will all, always benefit from working with huge pages, which is not necessarily always the case. Of course, I haven't looked at all kinds of workloads, and I must at least look at more workloads to, 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 to tell this with more, more certainty, right? And what is certain is that uh, the MySQL support for one gigabyte huge pages right now, it is kind of, kind of broken. So, thank you. <laughs>